How's it going everyone? Mike Sleater with KTM Research and Development. Uh, we're out here at Milestone with the intro of the all new KTM two strokes, 125, 150, and 250. Uh, we're really excited about this year's product. Um, we're you know, still moving forward on development and uh, technology and all the two strokes. Uh, this year we've brought back in the 125 but kept our you know, fan favorite 150 and, then, and, and have improved our 252 stroke as well. Um, you know, we think that, you know with the new two strokes and and the cost of four strokes that you know we're going to get a lot of people getting back on these two strokes and having fun and um, a big real important thing is having the um, 252 strokes legal for amateur racing um, and the 250F class really makes it you know nice for the kids to race against those other kids on a much more powerful bike, much more inexpensive bike to maintain and you know it should be it should be interesting to see these kids uh, racing these new bikes. Um, for this year, we have uh, um, linkage. Last year, we had a PDS with our four strokes having a link, and with this linkage, you know, it's you know everyone wanted to see it on the two strokes for 2012. We have it. Um, everything's pretty much the same with the motors, um, besides the intake and air boot on the 252 stroke. Uh, the, the linkage is a big, big uh, help for us with traction, balance of bike. Um, you know, each track you go to, you're, you're very close with your setting, whether it's sand, a hard pack, or whatever. Where, you know, PDS sometimes, you know, people tend to struggle. But we're really, really happy with you know the addition to the, the linkage this year, the chrome alloy frame, keeping that Brembo brakes, all the top quality parts that KTM has to offer. It should be. Make sure you go out to your dealer and or your Moto Tour demo days and check out these bikes. Hey guys, this is Ryan B. I'm out here testing the 2012 KTM Two Strokes. Um, we're at Milestone. The track conditions are. About perfect today, and uh, so far I've gotten to ride the 125, the 150, and the 252 stroke. With the 125, when I started riding it, the first thing I noticed was uh, how light it was. The bike's really nimble. Um, I can move it, kind of turn it on a dime type feeling. I can put it wherever I want it, um, and it, it still had power to pull itself out of you know muddy spots or or deep loamy spots. I could you know basically just ride the track just like if I was on a four stroke, and it still had the power. Um, that I needed to, to, to do everything with. Um, the best part about it was so light. I mean, I, you could ride this bike for hours and never get tired. Um, it, it just it worked real good. It didn't beat you up. Suspension wasn't harsh. The chassis worked well. Had uh, you know the right amount of flex. Um, you know, so the 125 I really enjoyed riding. The next bike I rode was a 252 stroke. Um, that bike is just insane, out of control, fast. Um, I still, to this day, think you know that bike would be competitive in the 450 class. Um, you know, to the point where you can ride it, you know, mellow and 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 it work just fine, or you can ride it really hard and really show the true strengths of the bike, where how powerful it is. The bike is so fast that you can literally come into a rut, put it in the rut and then gas it out and the thing could yank your arms off and pull you right off the back if you weren't careful. Um, but it, it makes it fun to ride. It has plenty of power to do, all, to do everything you need to do with it. Um, cornering wise, it, it, it just fell right in the ruts effortless, effortlessly. Um, you know, I, I didn't have to struggle with trying to fight it to, to lay over, to get it to the rut I want. I could just kind of toss the bike back, back and forth or shuffle it and it, it would fall right into the ruts perfectly. Um, down a straight, you know, drag through whoops. Um, one thing I noticed about all the bikes actually was in the past that, you know, without the linkage, people would say that they didn't, the, the KTMs didn't swap. Well, even now with the linkage, I can tell you for, you know, as being a rider that this bike won't swap. I have dang near killed myself a couple times out here. I thought, and the bike just pulled itself straight out, no problem. I mean, I didn't have no swap in side to side. I mean, I hit a mud spot and it literally threw the bike sideways. When I landed sideways, I was expecting it to kick back and shuffle back the other way, but it didn't. It just tracked and pulled straight. Um, so I was actually really impressed and surprised by that. You know how good you know all the bikes work. You know in a straight line and and even through chop and rough stuff, they work good. The last bike I got to ride was the 150. Um, it's kind of like the happy medium between the 125 and 250. For those of the for those of you that wouldn't want the power of the 252 two stroke, you might think it's my you know, might be a little bit too powerful or too strong. The 150 is kind of like that happy medium where it's got more power than the 125, but yet has doesn't have the power of the 252 stroke. Um, if I was to go out and buy a bike, I think you know between these three bikes, it'd be the 150 just because I enjoyed riding it. Still had the light, real nimble feeling of a 125, but had almost the power of the 252 stroke. Um, you know, one thing I also noticed about all the bikes that I really enjoyed was was the braking power. 
um, of the Brembo brakes that they have on these bikes. The, the braking power is, is unreal. I, I don't think I've ever ridden a, a bike with as good a braking power as these KTMs with the Brembo setup. Um, I was really impressed by it. But, you know, all together, all the bikes work so well and they're all so powerful. I mean, they're all a blast to ride. It, it's a really good, good group of bikes here. I enjoyed them. Hey, this is Rich Taylor with Transworld Motocross. Uh, we're out here at um, Milestone Raceway riding the uh, KTM Two Strokes. Um, uh, the first bike I rode today was the uh, KTM 250. Uh, they actually made a lot of improvements. I couldn't tell you if they were good because I didn't really ride last year's 250 that much. Um, haven't ridden 250s much at all this year. I did ride the YZ250 earlier. And I gotta say, this bike absolutely rips. Um, out of the corners, just launches. You know, it's so lightweight and so snappy. It just gets in and gets out really, really quick. Super fun to ride. Next up, I rode actually the, uh, the 125. I haven't ridden a 125 um, since probably 2000, maybe. Um, man, what a kick. It, it, uh, it, it just, the, you know, it's a screamer. It's a 125, wide open all the time clutching it out of the corners. Once you get the hang of, you know, running different lines and really carrying your momentum through the corners, you can actually go pretty fast on it. It was funny because I would come up behind guys that were on 450s and stuff and they're just looking over their shoulder like, what in the heck is coming behind me? Just because you're screaming the thing the entire time. Uh, then there was the 150 and all that was was like a, a, a 125 works bike it felt like. You know, I remember I did a lot of the testing on the old Suzuki, you know, Pastrana's bike and all the works bikes from Suzuki back in the day. And going from one to the other kind of felt like going from a stock RM to, to one of their works bikes. Um, it's just that much more. Handling wise was the same. It was just as light, but it just had that much more torque, that much more power out of the corners. Didn't have to clutch it as much could get to the inside and get over the next double without really any issues. Um, where the 125, you're just ringing it out and clutching it. Um, the 150 just did it, man. It's, it's a bike that, you know, if you just want to go out and, and mess around with your buddies, there's probably not a better bike on the planet than that one.